Please welcome AMD's Corporate Vice President, Architecture and Strategy, Robert Ormuth. Okay. Good morning, OCP. How are we doing? Everybody having a good day so far? So I'm going to take you on a little journey of OCP and AMD and, you know, how it really aligns with our strategy and, you know, but first, like everybody else, got to talk a little bit about AI first. And, you know, if, if you've been long in the industry long enough, like I have, um, you've seen all these technology waves, starting back from the mainframe all the way up through the cloud, all the way up to where we are with, with Gen AI. And I hate to say that I think I've seen, been involved in every one of these waves, a little, little bit on the mainframe, not that much. So I'm old, but not that old. But on the, on the Gen AI front, you know, it's really this most disruptive technology I truly believe that we've ever seen. And that's because of profound impact to humans. You know, today we're down somewhere in the human Q&A productivity. We're early, honestly. Um, you know, we're heading towards autonomous robots, true human assistance to help humans live, you know, better lives. I, I was actually joined, there's a picture of me on the uh, stage at uh, Dell Tech World where I was joined on stage by a little humanoid robot. Luckily, he was only four foot tall, not Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Terminator kind of uh, android. But I truly believe that's where we're, we're heading, you know, in the future here. And the market is huge and growing. Um, you know, the 60% the CAGR or so overall, inference is starting to really take off as businesses figure out how to make money with AI. I mean, that's the, at the end of the day, all the training's great, but businesses are going to adopt to translate it into profit. But AI is creating a lot of architectural challenges for us. Um, we came from a world where we had general purpose computing, we had FP64 and scientific computing for HPC. And the world of AI is forcing us to think differently because we're having to trade off accuracy for speed. Um, AI is about speed, so we've invented a lot of new math formats, um, FP4, FP6. But even within the world of AI, it's pulling itself apart too. When you look inside the unique requirements for the cloud versus edge or embedded or endpoints, it's pulling us apart. And so we're going to have to optimize the architecture at the silicon level and at the platform level, we're going to have to optimize differently for those different use cases. And so it's a really exciting time. But at the same time, there's a lot of, you know, you've heard a lot of talk this morning about a five gigawatt data center. Um, and there's a lot of impact happening that impacts us all, you know, at the infrastructure level. The chip power is going through the roof. The rack power is going equally high. The data center power is going 10x. The networking bandwidth. And it's kind of interesting that the first two, chip power and rack power, the, the predominant driver on that is because of the ROI of drive and density and to volt and try and stay in copper just as long as we can. Um, the reason we're making bigger and bigger chips and putting them denser and denser in the rack is to keep in copper just as long as we can. We will get to optics someday, um, but it's uh, you know, going to be a little ways out. And so we have all these implications of trying to drive perf per watt, performance, making it easy, make it easy to cool, easy to adopt, driving the pace of innovation. And one of the themes that comes through all of this is one of the best ways to address all of this is through open collaboration in the industry. And so as part of AMD's strategy, if you look at AMD's kind of top level strategy, it's about um, solving the world's biggest challenges to drive human um, innovation with high performance products. And part of the, in our AI strategy, again, it's about those leadership compute engines, getting to full reference stack architectures. And then it's about the open ecosystem that is really um, what AMD is involved in. And so we are a true believer in open, driving open hardware, open software, open ecosystems. We're involved in, very involved in OCP, um, but the alignment of the OCP mission in AMD is fundamentally, the goal is just fundamentally aligned. We truly believe that open standard promoting, open collaboration drives everybody forward. And so what I wanted to go through was just kind of highlight the areas where AMD has been very focused over the last couple of years. 
And the reason we've been focused on this is because that open innovation drives choice, it drives rapid innovation, co-innovation, quality, you know, basically friction reduction to adopt technology. And so we've been involved in OCP, you know, from the, from the start of DCMHS. Um, again, the, our goal there was to reduce friction to adoption. How do we get our chips into boards, into OEMs, into end users faster? How do we make them higher quality? Um, getting people collaborating on the same design. So we've moved all of our reference designs, if you haven't heard or seen. We moved all of our reference designs, our customer reference boards are all now DCMHS, starting with our Turin platform, and then our new Venice platform that comes out next year is all in different form factors of DCMHS. So we fundamentally believe that this has really helped AMD drive adoption. And, you know, we're somewhere north of 40% server share now. Um, and a lot of that is because we're able to drive, reduce that friction to adoption. So very motivated in the, all the different elements of DCMHS. We're also very involved in the, the RAS standpoint, because one thing that we've learned from all our MDC customers is law of large numbers, you will have failures. And so we've been really involved in OCP and driving in some of the um, hardware fault management subprojects because we believe fundamentally that this benefits us, the silicon providers, platform providers, and end users, you know, to increase quality. And so having commonality on the RAS APIs, how do you manage the RAS on a GPU? How do you do RAS debug on the GPU, or fleet management, fault management. These are all projects that we're very involved in and participation that, you know, we would love to see more participation in the community. On the security front, we were really at the forefront of Calyptra. Um, this was basically a hardware root of trust, open source, RISC-V kind of implementation to basically how do you verify your silicon is your silicon running your firmware? And that's what Calyptra was, was really about. And we will be intercepting that in some of our products in 26. And then we've been involved in SAFE, which is basically how do you have an outside audit? How do you audit? And, you know, if you're going to say something secure, you have to have somebody else come check it out. That's what the SAFE program is about. And then you have the OCP attestation, which is about kind of the system-wide. How do I know everything that's in that system is the right chip, the right firmware, the right software level, it's been audited, and I know it's a, a completely secure system. So these are, you know, on the security front, some of the major programs that we have been driving inside of AMD with the OCP community. But we haven't stopped there. Um, there's a lot more to go, you know, management and debug. Again, law of large numbers. How do you debug a million servers in a fleet? You're going to have failures that you wouldn't have seen in a 100-unit deployment, or you would have just chalked up to a, you know, an OS crash, but you're going to have fleet management issues. So how do we get that? How do you update, you know, 100,000 GPUs firmware in a consistent way? How do you manage those GPUs consistently? So there's work streams in OCP where we're standardizing those APIs to make it very easy. Um, you know, on the CPU front, there's an impactless firmware update. How do you update firmware on a CPU without forcing an OS reboot or a CPU reboot? So we're working through um, all those details. And, along, and now we have liquid cooling come along. Um, we're going to have to manage you know, the CDUs and the cracks and everything that goes in there. We're going to have to manage, and we need to do it in a standard way. And we're pulling in infrastructure that historically has not been very modernized. When you look at some of the infrastructure and data centers around cracks and CDUs and PDUs, I mean, some of them have CAN buses on them still. They don't even have Ethernet. So we're going to have to pull them into the whole ecosystem for management. And then power and cooling. Again, we're very active here. Getting unification on the blind make quick connect. Um, I think we're making great progress in OCP and getting the two, the two uh, prevailing kind of initiatives unified to one with the UKD V2. Uh, we hosted a workshop in, uh, in Austin earlier this, uh, earlier this year where we got everybody together with the, with the notion of harmonizing this together. Um, we're working right now, you know, inside of uh, OCP as well on how do we make sure that we have some standardization or some commoditization on the fluid types. Um, the fluid type does matter, and we want to make sure that we recommend to our customers what's the right one to use so that they have success. But beyond OCP, there's other things going on. 
Um, you know, we, we recognized a couple years ago that the network really mattered a lot, especially the scale out and the scale up. So we started, uh, we got together with a bunch of friends and started all through Ethernet um, to really address that scale out networking. And, you know, happy to say that the 1.0 was released um, a couple months ago. And then likewise, you know, on the, on the GPU scale up front, the industry leaders got together and said, hey, we need an open choice, high performance interconnect for scale up. And so the industry got together and we formed Ultra Accelerator Link. In fact, AMD donated a, a bunch of, most of the, a lot of the first wave IP came from our Infinity Fabric. So I want to do a quick test since you've kind of been here bored for a minute. How many of you are involved in, or your company is involved in UEC? Raise your right hand. Companies involved in UEC? How about UAL? Can we have, we have some with two hands? Good, good. So, and, and the important thing about that to me is really the quote on the bottom. While, you know, competition is the, is the law of the jungle, you know, cooperation is the law of civilization. So we have to advance together. And so we formed, you know, UAL and UEC, um, fundamentally different technologies, right? Um, Ultra Accelerator Link is all about the load store world. How do we stay natively in the same language that an HBM and a GPU talk? It talks native load store, address data command. You know, the Ultra Ethernet talks packets. It was invented to have computer-computer communication with frames. Perfectly great technologies, but optimized fundamentally differently for different worlds. The packet world versus the load store world. Um, you know, if you look at the goal of UAL is how do I get as much HBM connected across the network as fast as possible with the lowest latency, lowest power, lowest cost. All through Ethernet, millions and millions of nodes. We're never going to do millions of nodes with, with UAL. But there is a big difference at the cost, power, silicon area, and latency level between the two because they're really optimized for two different worlds. And so in our view, it's about you know, any CPU, any accelerator, any NIC, any switch. We want choice competition to drive us forward in the world of AI, in the era of AI. And so the, the last part, I want to just tease up a topic. Uh, many of you have been, in, been involved. You've seen these form factors. The industry's done a great job on PCI Chem and OCP, the UBB OAM. AMD's current product family instinct is shipping in the UBB OAM, as shown in the, on the top right. And we've pushed the envelope on them a lot. We've pushed the power, we've pushed the signal integrity, um, we've added liquid cooling to them, we've made them double wide, we've added extra connectors for power, we've done everything we can. But we're starting to run out of steam, I would say. And so there's a big question that I have in my head at AMD as part of you know, driving our long-term strategy at AMD is, where do we go next? And so I got the great idea to come into this before this conference to say, well, I'm going to feed all this into Grok and describe the problem to Grok and say, you know, we've been doing PCI Chem, we pushed the power, we did OAM, we pushed the power, we've got this scale up and scale out fabric now that we need to blend into it. Um, we need commonality, multi-vendor, and so I asked Grok, you know, what would you do? And it actually gave me an answer, um, surprisingly, and it actually came out and drew me a picture like this. And it said, hey, go modify the chem card, you know, change the shape, size of the chem card, make the connector bigger, go put UAL and, U and, uh, put UAL and PCIe on it, put a blind mate, you know, quick connect for power and, and for, or a blind mate for power and for liquid cooling, and run all three Ethernet out the front. So I was like, hey, that's really cool. That's a great idea. So I wanted to introduce it to my friends. I don't know if this is the right idea or not. But I wanted to put it out there as a, we have to start thinking differently behind before, you know, what we do next. This is not an official project. We're not officially doing it. This was a, you know, kind of a, you know, maybe I massaged it to this answer. I don't know. But you know how AI works. But it was interesting that it took all the input and said, this is what it recommends. So not that I always trust AI, but it's a, it's a nice something to start with to think about. And so really, I wanted to just tell everybody here to think about it. And so my call to action from AMD is, you know, we really believe time and time again, open is the winning bet. 
You know, it aligns with our AMD goals and strategy around um, development, so scaling innovation through collaboration. We're involved in a lot of projects at OCP. Um, a couple years ago, we weren't. And so I really want to encourage you to join us in those projects because choice, flexibility, that rapid co-innovation, the portability, proven quality, all comes out of that joint collaboration. And, you know, there are other things outside of OCP that I encourage you to participate in, especially with the Ultra Accelerator Link and Ultra Ethernet. They're making good headways. Um, the first Ultra Ethernet products are starting to ship in the market now. The first UAL products will come out next year. So, you know, join us there. And get just a reminder for us all, while, you know, competition, we are in many ways, many of us are competing with, the, with one another. It is the law of the jungle, but we're civilized human beings, so we need to collaborate um, to advance. So thank you for the time, and enjoy OCP uh, Taipei. Thank you.